Hey there, welcome to Guncraft. So I started this channel doing some gunsmithing and things like that, and I never really wanted to get into political issues, but given what's going on in Virginia, I gotta join this conversation. I'm hoping people that maybe don't know as much about guns or have an opinion that we should be restricting gun rights will watch this video because the media is not giving you the whole story. There are many different aspects to this issue. It's well beyond the scope of a single video, but in this video I want to talk about police response time. I'm convinced that most people that are pro-gun control live in relatively safe communities, probably in the suburbs, probably in cities, and have police response times of five minutes. So you feel confident where you live, safe enough, that if something happens you can call 911 and the police are going to come and they're going to be able to help you. Whether that's true or not is a different discussion, but let's just start with that. And you know, if you live in an area like that, Good for you. What I want you to consider is not everybody lives where you live. Half the country lives out in rural areas. You know, some rural areas are more rural than others, obviously. Best case scenario, your police response time is more than 10 minutes. If you've studied this issue at all, you know in an assault situation, 10 minutes is an eternity. Everything's done. I have many friends who are police officers, and they've told me that, you know, our job isn't to prevent crime. Our job is to come after the fact and, and pick up the pieces and find the bad guys. It's very rare that the police, especially in a rural setting, are able to intervene on an ongoing crime. That almost never happens. Take my county, for example. I live in a very big county. Frequently at night, uh, there's one officer on for the whole county. It takes half an hour to drive from one end of the county to the other. So. If I call 911, depending on where that officer is, at best case scenario, it's going to be 15 minutes before he shows up. Best case, very likely it's going to be much longer. I mean, it takes five minutes to get up my driveway. Let me give you an example. A friend of mine uh, lives on a farm just up the road from me. He came home from work one night, and uh, right outside of his farm, he saw a guy laying in the ditch. Uh, to him, looked like a, a body. He thought he was dead. He stopped, got out, checked the guy. The guy wasn't dead. He was breathing, but he was lethargic and uh, really out of it. What's he do? He calls 911, says, I need the police. I need an ambulance. Uh, I've got a guy here laying in the ditch. He's not doing well. Here's a serious situation. The police should respond to this, right? I mean, this is, this is not uh, a small thing. This person could die. So how long do you think he sits there with this guy before anybody shows up? Remember, he called both an ambulance and the police. How long do you think it was? Five minutes? Ten minutes? It was 45 minutes before the ambulance arrived. At that point, the guy had woken up a little bit. He was doing a little bit better. Thankfully, he hadn't gotten violent or anything like that. And the ambulance took him away. The police didn't show up until a little bit after that. It was about an hour before the police arrived. An hour. I think that makes the point, living in an area like I do, in a lot of ways, we are on our own. To illustrate this point, we're going to start driving up my driveway while the video continues. So another example, and uh, ironically, he doesn't live in a bad area, but the same friend, same farm, a convict recently escaped from the local prison, and uh, they actually never found him. Uh, he disappeared. This was several months ago, and to this day they haven't found him. He was last seen on my friend's farm. You think he should have to give up his weapons when... when we, we've got an escaped convict that was last seen on his property. I mean, obviously, he has a right to be able to defend himself, and these things aren't theoretical. These things really happen, you know? There, there are plenty of, of criminals out there, and most of us don't want to be defenseless against that, and we have a right to own the weapons that society has deemed necessary to deal with those threats. So, what is an appropriate weapon to defend yourself against domestic threats? Well, by definition, that's what the police carry. The police are there to deal with domestic threats. When you call 911, if you're in a, in a city with a police response time of three to five minutes, and you call 911 and say, someone's breaking into my house, they're going to attack me, they're attacking my wife, the police are going to come in force. And what are they going to show up with? Well, they're going to show up with semi-automatic weapons. They're going to show up with standard capacity magazines, not these 10-round magazines that everybody wants to take the public down to. And there's going to be three, four, five, maybe even more police officers showing up to this. Isn't it kind of hypocritical for someone who lives in an area with a five-minute police response time who essentially has multiple hired guns that can show up in a matter of minutes to tell me that I'm not allowed to own semi-automatic weapons with a standard capacity magazine? Because that's what we're talking about. And... If you don't understand what I'm talking about, when I say semi-automatic versus fully automatic, and when I say magazine, if you don't know what those things are, you really shouldn't be in this debate because you don't know what guns are. You don't know the subject enough to have an opinion. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, how can you be voting on it? Should you be voting on it? Of course not. It's like 
Say we were voting on airbags in automobiles and you had no idea what an airbag was, well, you shouldn't be voting because you, <laughs> you don't know anything about airbags. And so if you don't know anything about guns, you don't know what semi-automatic versus fully automatic, what a magazine is versus a clip, uh, then, then you really shouldn't be in this conversation. What I'm basically saying is, by definition, the weapons the police carry are what is effective and necessary to deal with domestic threats. I'm not talking about what the military carries, those are war weapons. And I want to say, you know, here is the dreaded AR-15. The media loves to use the term military-style assault weapons. Just so you know, assault weapon is a made-up term. It doesn't mean anything, it's not a military term, it's not a, a gun term. This is a semi-automatic, magazine-fed rifle, and that's what I'm talking about. This is what the police SWAT teams use, this is what the police carry. Most police have semi-automatic, magazine-fed pistols on their hip. The only difference between a pistol and a rifle is the length of the barrel. Both of them have magazines that hold the bullets, and semi-automatic, which means every time you pull the trigger, it's going to fire a round. If you pull and hold this trigger, it doesn't continue to fire. That's fully automatic, and that's what the military uses. So this is not a gun that the military would use. This does not have full auto. It doesn't have three-round burst. Most of the stuff on here that people find scary, this, it's just a grip. I can take that off. I can hold the gun like that. It doesn't change the function. This is just a barrel shroud that if the barrel gets hot, you grab this and it doesn't burn your hand. You can take that off, the gun's still going to function. This being collapsible, you know what that does? It allows this to fit in my gun safe. The only other thing about that is it allows my children, when they were younger, would be able to shoot it more effectively because the gun wasn't too long for them. This being collapsible, which is a big part of the assault weapons, is meaningless. It doesn't change the effectiveness of the weapon at all. This being a pistol grip, for some reason this scares people. You can take that off and just hold the gun like you would hold a normal gun. It's hard with that grip there, but just hold it like that. You know, it doesn't change the effectiveness of the gun. This is a light for my night vision. Why would a guy need night vision? Well, I'm a farmer, uh, predator control. I hunt coyotes, foxes, bobcats, and uh, actually I have beaver that are, are damming up my pond now, and they're nocturnal animals, so you hunt those at night. This is the predator hunting gun of choice. Uh, I don't have feral hogs in my area, but when you're hunting feral hogs, this is what you want, a magazine-fed, semi-automatic rifle. And this is what people are banning. This is what Virginia is going to make a felony. Uh, and that, that is really something. But let's get back. I'm getting off topic. Hey, and I almost forgot to mention 2AC3 is giving away an AR-15. So you guys should go over there and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. If you live in one of these areas that's safe and you feel comfortable not having a weapon, well, good for you. But those of us that live in the country that have police response times of an hour, we don't live where you live. I think it's very hypocritical for someone to say, oh, well, you don't have a right to own those weapons. You should just call the police. Well, the police can't help me. I have many officers who are friends. This is not disparaging police officers. It's just a fact. They would agree that they come and pick up the pieces after a crime. They can't come help me and save me and my family if we're being attacked. That's up to me. So I submit that I have the right to own the weapons that society has deemed effective and necessary to deal with domestic threats. By definition, that's what the police carry. So how can we then argue, oh, we're, we're going to ban those weapons? You get my police response times down to three to five minutes and then we'll have a discussion. There are other arguments against that at that point, but that's never going to happen. At the same time, there's people that live in inner cities high crime areas in cities. I've lived in a city before and I had friends, uh, thankfully I didn't, uh, but I had friends who heard gunshots on a nightly basis. Now are you gonna tell them that, uh, oh, well you don't, you don't need a weapon to defend yourself, you can just uh, call 911. That's crazy. The police cannot defend those people. They have a right to be able to defend themselves. If, for me, it's not about defending myself. It's about defending my family. I have a wife and two daughters. The thought of someone coming in here and attacking my family and me being helpless to do anything about it, calling the police, running away, waiting an hour for them to show up, that's like a nightmare. I have several friends in a neighboring county. At times, they don't have anybody on. At night, they have a, an officer on call, but he is not on duty. He or she is at home or asleep. If they get called, they have to wake up, put on their clothes, get in the car, and go respond. Now, how do you think their police response time is going to be? Do you think they should have to give up their weapons? They don't have the right to semi-automatic weapons to defend themselves from, uh, from domestic threats. If we had a real media, they would 
be informing people of things like this. Police response times in my county are nowhere near the level where I feel comfortable calling 911 for help. And there are millions and millions of people that live in similar circumstances to me, and that is why people are pro-gun, because they understand this. Now, I used to live in the suburbs. We had some shotguns that we would use for deer hunting. Guns were just, you know, they were for hunting. It was no big deal. I was naive to this too at that time, and it wasn't until I moved to a truly rural area like my farm where I began to realize, wow, I am out here on my own, and I needed to be able to defend myself. And that's when I really became pro-gun. So, for those of you out there that are anti-gun, are pro-gun control, that feel that people are able to own these weapons and shouldn't be, realize that if you were to move to an area like this, you'd probably be changing your tune on that subject. Consider that when you vote. This is very hypocritical for people that live in these safe areas to then turn around and say, oh, you shouldn't be able to own weapons like that to defend yourself and your family. Well, then you give up your 911. You, you shouldn't have the police showing up hired guns with the exact same weapons that you're going to take away from me. Uh, that, is, that is hypocrisy. I think the real problem here is our media. The media is either ignorant or uh, deliberately not giving the entire picture of the gun issue. If you're only going to point out the negative things about guns day after day, month after month, year after year, people are going to start to believe that that's all they are, negative. But that's not the case, and guns have a lot of positive uses. They are used defensively a lot. I'm thinking about doing a video on gun use defensively uh, because that's another thing that the media never talks about. Most people have never even considered, oh, is, are guns used defensively? Is there data out there? Yes, there is. So tell me what you guys think. Would you like to see a video on that? What do you think of this video? If you like it and want to see more, share, like, subscribe. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. I've got some beavers to hunt. See you later.